Our reading from the New Testament this morning is from John chapter 10. This is Jesus speaking, and, and Jesus said, I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And whenever he has gathered all his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him, because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. And those who heard Jesus use this analogy, um, this word picture, didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again and said, I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and they'll come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to st steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, so that they could, have, they could live life to the fullest. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, and when the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. That's because he isn't the shepherd. The sheep aren't really his, so the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. He's only a hired hand, and the sheep don't matter to him. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. I give up my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that don't belong to this sheep pen, and, and I must lead them too. They will listen to my voice, and they will be one flock with one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me. I give up my life so that I can take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. I have the right to give it up, and I have the right to take it up again. I receive this commandment from my Father. Now there was another division among the Jews because of Jesus' words. Many of them said, He has a demon and has lost his mind. Why listen to him? And others said, these aren't the words of someone who has a demon. Can a demon heal the eyes of people who are blind? These are the words of God for the people of God. So, here we are in our series of talks about the I Am sayings of Jesus and asking who Jesus says He is and what difference that makes to us and who I am. Week one was, I am the bread of life. How God fed his children in the desert during the Exodus with bread from heaven called manna, and Jesus himself is the bread of life. And then in week two, it was, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And how God led the children of Israel in the wilderness with that pillar of light, and that we don't have to walk in darkness, afraid, alone, trapped, because Jesus is the light of the world. And this week, in our studies of the I Am sayings of Jesus, it's I Am the Good Shepherd. Now, I suspect some of you probably know sheep, and sheep better than I do. Um, you might know firsthand what sheep are like, and how modern day shepherds work and maybe I should have asked you all one of you to, to do this this talk this morning about sheep and shepherds but uh, I didn't but sheep are the same everywhere I suppose and I, I remember so clearly in, in college I had a good friend his name was Dave Rudd and Dave was a farmer who who knew sheep and Dave was leading class devotions one day um, it was about sheep and shepherds. I, I don't remember what passage it was. Um, 
But Dave explained that when the scripture re referred to his people, referred to us as sheep, that it wasn't a compliment. Because in Dave's words, he said, sheep are dumber than a hoe handle. So I guess, no, it's not a compliment, even though they are cute and cuddly as lambs and, and they just spring around. Um, there's nothing funnier than that, just watching that. But Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. One of those I am sayings. And this one, as a shepherd, you'll minute, in a minute you'll see how it links back to the Old Testament like the other two. So the first thing we need to do is just kind of set the stage. We have to go back to John chapter 9 of the Gospel of John. See, in chapter 9 of the Gospel of John, Jesus healed a man born blind. It came right after chapter 8 where we were reading the part about how Jesus was the light of the world and making someone see, letting someone out of the darkness. It was a continuation of that story. But in chapter 9, the religious leaders of the time, the Jewish people, started to dispute and challenge Jesus again. And they even said that Jesus was doing this of the devil. And in fact, most of the religious leaders, the Pharisees, had already made up their mind about Jesus and that no amount of information or evidence would change their mind. Now, how do I know that? What's in verse 22 of chapter, chapter 9? It says, The Jewish authorities had already decided that whoever confessed Jesus to be the Christ would be expelled from the synagogue they'd be excommunicated. Does that remind you of people, of situations you know about today? Um, I don't need any new information. Don't confuse me with facts. In fact, I've made up my mind, so don't even try to confuse me with anything new. It's as though they plug their ears and shout, na 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 you can't convince me of anything. And so no matter what Jesus did, they were going to try and discredit him. And that's what sets the stage for chapter 10 that we read in verses 1 to 21. It's a story that has three parts. It has the parable, it has that opening sequence, and then it has those two I am sayings. Jesus says, I am the gate and I am the shepherd. So part one was in verses 1 to 6. It's not exactly a parable because it doesn't, it's not a complete story, but it is a word picture the way parables are. So we'll call it a parable. Um, it's a story that Jesus tells about shepherds as compared to thieves and robbers. It describes what a good shepherd is really like. Now the people listening to him as in the previous stories about the bread and the light wouldn't mistake what he was really talking about because in the Old Testament God was often described as a shepherd we read that we sang about it with Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd King David who wrote many of the Psalms, who wrote the 23rd Psalm, was himself a shepherd. They would have known that the Messiah, the Savior, would come from the family tree of David, a family of shepherds, a family of King David who was the best of the kings. But they would have also known about the writings of from the prophets and how the prophets spoke against and about the shepherds and kings of the day and of the coming Messiah. They would have especially known about a passage in Ezekiel chapter 34. It was in Ezekiel chapter 34 where the rulers, the kings, were not good shepherds. In fact, Ezekiel was called to prophesy against them about the shepherds of Israel, where in chapter 34, Ezekiel, by the word of the Lord, said, 
they tend themselves instead of the sheep. You shepherds use up, eat up the resources that don't, and you don't care for the sheep. You don't strengthen the weak. You don't heal the sick. You don't bring back the strays. You let the flock scatter. And of course, Ezekiel was prophesying against the kings and the priests. You can find those stories in Second Kings of the Old Testament. And in verse 10 of Ezekiel 34, God proclaims that he is against those shepherds and that they're no shepherds at all and that they're in it for themselves and not caring for the sheep. And we wish we could say that doesn't happen today. But it does with some preachers with some clergy, with some churches and some politicians, but it does happen. And then it says in verse 11, God declares, I myself, God Almighty, will be the shepherd. The people listening to Jesus would have known this passage. They would have known the word picture that of God as a shepherd, of the king as a shepherd. But verse 6 of chapter 10 of John says they didn't get it. Neither the people following Jesus nor the religious leaders and the Pharisees, they didn't get what Jesus was saying about that parable. Now, why would that be? Why would they miss what that was about? I like crossword puzzles. No, that may feel like a left-hand turn. I promise I'll be right back on subject in just a second. But in a crossword puzzle, sometimes I look for a clue over and over again, and, and until I see that clue meant something different than I thought, I don't get it. Like this one. There was one just a couple days ago. Um, the clue was withdraws from nursing. I'm thinking nurses, emergency rooms, doctor's office, withdraws from nursing. I finally looked up the clue. The clue, the, the answer was weans. It was talking about weaning a pet from its... Well, you get it. Or, or sometimes, you know, we'll be looking at a, a mechanical problem, you know, where we're trying to get some part either out or in, and it just won't go until we turn it just a slightly different way and it slides right in, kaboom. Okay, so that something might be what was happening here. See, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, they they could not, they would not see themselves as anything other than the good shepherd, even though they were clearly using and abusing people to make themselves rich and powerful. So Jesus goes back and tells them point blank in verses 7 to 10, I am the gate. And what's a gate for? Protection. But it's also for inclusion. Whoever whoever enters through the great gate will be saved. They'll come and go for pasture just as they please and they'll go back in for safety. Jesus said, because I'm the gate, they can live life to the fullest. Sounds like a resort a paradise for sheep. Exactly, that's the point. Not for the shepherd's benefit, but for the sheep. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd doesn't merely care for the sheep, but will lay his life down for the sheep. See, out in the pastures, away from town, the shepherds would build an enclosure with rock walls about yay high, but they didn't have a gate. And what the shepherd would literally do was lay down in the gate where, they would, where the sheep would come and go. There was no gate. The shepherd would literally lay down his life for the sheep. They wouldn't leave without him standing up to let them go. 
and nothing would come into the sheep without him knowing. Every night, the shepherd would lay his life down for the sheep. The people who heard that, they would know. And Jesus says it more than once, I'll lay my life down for the sheep. I counted four times, he said it, in that short passage. He also said, my sheep know my voice. The sheep follow the shepherd. Not herded by dogs, not herded by any means. The, they, they literally follow the shepherd. They follow the voice. And they're still led like, like that in many places in the Middle East. If you, if you just even Google pictures of shepherds in the Middle East, you'll see one man and a whole flock of sheep just following right behind him. That's what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is not going to chase you around. He's not going to go to round you up, tie you up, herd you into the flock. He'll just call you by name and let you follow his voice. And then he says, oh, by the way, this isn't an exclusive deal. I have other sheep not from my pen. I'm going to find them as well. You know, just think about that one for a little while. So Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. I am the gate. And there sure is lots more that we could say about that. Lots more implications of who Jesus is and what he's like as a good shepherd. But it's time for us to turn our attention to what does Jesus as the gate and as the good shepherd say about who I am, who you are. I am, you are, sheep. Now, sheep is a flock animal. They want to, they need to be around others, not alone. We sheep, we're wired not to be alone. We're wired to need to belong with other people. And we need other people. We need each other for protection. We each have a name. It said, I call each one by name. We're part of the flock, but we're not like anyone else in the flock. We are individuals with our own personalities. We are each unique to God. We have a name. What's your name? What's your name? I have several names. But the number one name, the name I cherish, I love the most, is I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. As a sheep, as a sheep, we need to learn early on to recognize the shepherd's voice. Now, I don't know how that happens with sheep. But for us, Yes, I know, you hear me say it over and over and over again. We learn to hear his voice through the scriptures. Mostly through the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We need to hear his voice. And then as sheep, as it says in the passage, we run away from strangers. See, people were turning away from the Pharisees to follow Jesus. They knew the shepherd's voice. They ran away in crowds and crowds from the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, those poor shepherds. They ran to the shepherd. So the question for us is, do you, do we run to Jesus to follow his voice? As sheep, I need, you need a gate a gate for protection, a sheep pen, an enclosure. With a, with a gate, I can come and go. I can have full abundant life because I know I'm protected. I know I can find pasture. I know I can come back in the evenings. With a gate, I have boundaries to keep me safe. Safe from intruders, from wild animals, from thieves who would steal our joy. There's freedom with boundaries. See, I don't have to, you don't have to decide where boundaries are clear, where the fence is, where the gate is in place. 
we're free to roam. See, what are the boundaries that are most important to you? Boundaries, perhaps, about what you can eat or what you can drink. Boundaries about where you can go. Boundaries about what you can say, what you can be. Boundaries, not that keep us penned up. No, boundaries that keep those things, desires and practices that would harm us out. How about boundaries that keep us from doing too much? Boundaries that tell us you need rest. Where do those boundaries come from? From the shepherd, who's also the gate. So because Jesus is our shepherd and he is our gate, you can be a part of the flock. You see, following Jesus is a together thing. We need to be part of a group of people that follow the voice of the shepherd, a group that follows Christ. And at the same time, an individual with a name. You can't be lost in the shuffle because... Jesus loves you. In another parable that Jesus said, remember, he left 99 back in the sheepfold to go out and find the one that was lost. Jesus Christ loves you, knows you by name. Because you're a sheep in the fold with Jesus, you are protected protected because you're part of the flock that's kept safe by the shepherd. You know the voice because we learn to hear it. And we can live our lives to the fullest because we are safe within the boundaries of the shepherd and his fold. Oh yes, I know, we push those boundaries from time to time. But he will and does call us back. How do I know all this is true? Because Jesus gave his life for us because he is the good shepherd. I am a sheep of his flock. How about you? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And who I am is a sheep. How about you? Who I am is a child of God. Yes, I am. How about you? I hope, I pray, that each one of us would declare that, stand up and claim, I am a child of God. Do you hear the voice of the shepherd calling you? If you're wandering, he calls you back to his side. If you're not yet part of the flock, the gate's wide open. Jesus calls you to come. Keep your heart open. Open your heart. Open your eyes. Open your ears to hear the voice of the shepherd. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that you've given Jesus, who is our shepherd, who is our gate. Oh Lord, that we would ever and always listen to your voice. Your voice that calls us, calls us to be your children. For it's in your name I pray. Amen.